So, uh, next up, we have Jenny McDougall. Uh, Jenny McDougall lives and writes in St. Paul, Minnesota, where she teaches English literature at St. Catherine University. She is a semi-finalist for the Pablo Neruda in Poetry, and her work has been nominated for a pushcart. Her poems have appeared in Waterstone Review, Nimrod International Journal of Poetry and Prose, Paper Darts, Redbird, Dinosaur Bees, oh, I've never heard of Dinosaur Bees, I'll have to check that one out, Dinosaur Bees and elsewhere. She is also a poetry editor at Redbird Chapbooks. She loves roller skating, discussing feminist narratives and literature, and most things that are neat. Please welcome Jenny. <laughs> Hello, I'm really happy to be here with you all. Um, so yeah, we were supposed to, we were asked to read uh, something St. Paulish, and I live in St. Paul, being a transplant from Minneapolis, so not very far. Um, but I don't really write about St. Paul. I write about Minneapolis um, because. So I have some poems for you. Minneapolis blaze on after Karen Harriman. There are days when I love this city again. The metered avenues and ridged streets, those pearly lamps and lakes, footsteps of a giant. Those days I want the arrogance of the Minneapolitan, the better than yous, the knowing smiles of this city dweller. Sing me the curves of the River Parkway, Bohemian Flats, the spot where the bridge fell into the water. Let me love the bloated smell of the Mississippi and Longfellow or the rush of the falls, those limestone walls, the wooded pathway to the belly of the river. And I could even love again for a time, the now gentrified neighborhoods with the crusty punks and the loping hipsters. Give me mats and the ghost of froggies, Riverview Theater and that damned <coughs> dandelion fountain. I am in love with the expanse of green that once was the Guthrie Theater broken. Say you love me too, Minneapolis. Say we belong together. Remind me of the blue nights at Embers, eating eggs and pie. How we cruised through these streets singing. Tell me of how my mother found her way here, this city an open palm, how she pushed me into this world, how we made our home in small apartments, gems in Bryant, wilder, wittier, Bancroft. Prove to me that every bad thing that happened here was a pearl. Drink a whiskey cranberry and say you forgive me for leaving, for finding St. Paul more beautiful, better, for never missing Cedar Riverside or Powderhorn, not even a little bit, for saying I never wanted to come back. Say, oh honey, say I can come back anytime, even though everything has changed. Uh, you don't have to <laughs> John's Island, northeastern Ontario, late summer. Every now and then, loon tremolos, duets. The edge of this island is scalloped, pine drunk and quiet, umber quiet, fog filled quiet, quiet enough for fish jumps, scaled bellies, winking bright. Brian Eno on the cassette deck, hot coffee in the cool mornings, blue mornings, violet mornings, sunrises that smear the horizon mornings, mornings reading stories about wolves, stories about hands and mouths and hearts. We sky, we boat, the sound of water and wood, the sound of wave and crest, the sound of wind and branch, foot and forest floor. At times, sweet grass, Smoke signals from Bear Island, moose sightings and elk bones, the call of one Girl Scout to another, their canoes rust-colored, ponytails sw swaying. Other times, blushing leaves spinning, horseflies darting, the smell of wood carvings, verdant smells, deep green, deep brown, moss smell, fecund and feathery. We clasp hands, we dive, we surface. Here, a day, day's stretch, yawning into sunset, a cobalt blue, vaulted sky. Our nights, glass lake, dark water, distant loons, their throats fluted, calling and calling. Warm whiskey, viola voice, threaded with laughter. Moonlight, pewter light, nickel light, the sky dotted in stars, Milky Way arcing, seam of the galaxy. We awe. We breath, 
dusky blue-black cloud of bats overhead. Always. Constellations and shooting stars, whirling satellites, the feeling of being small, the feeling of being miraculous, the feeling of being. At 32, she works with children. They can all fold delicate origami cranes, some the size of dimes, their fingers creasing construction paper over and over again. The boys chitter as monkeys, feet propped up on chairs, showing off their newest kicks, matchstick bodies pressing against time. Here, the girls play at women, babies made out of scarves, carried against pink and purple and glitter tops, their voices folding into others, carrying across the room, across the playground. Sometimes they poke each other, fingers touching kneecaps and elbows, the underside of chins, hair, testing their own limits, how their bodies are different. They all terrify her, their insistent mouths and hands, the way they know her name, that she exists in their orbit alongside the rules to Gaga Ball and how to make a paper rocket, the intricacies of photosynthesis and the number of countries in the world. They ask her every day when the baby is coming and she lies to them, spinning yarns about storks and ovens with buns, never that sometimes babies stop growing, that cells stop dividing, that the world can be so miraculous and cruel all at once. She knows they would furrow their brows, faces breaking into frowns, composing tiny questions that have big answers. She knows they are too small to carry such weight. I have one more for you. It's called Surface. In this water, you tread, and I cling to the wooden ladder, slippery with algae and sandalwood soap. Every so often you pass behind me, a dark thing, and I am always seven, knees tucked under chin, watching Jaws too with Angela, bee-mouthed and curled fist. You take me, pull me, glinting rocks passing underfoot to where sky and water meet. This must be what being a planet feels like, a landscape pulled tight, a beating heart lattice. You laugh into my mouth, and Angela presses play on those kids in the water. Flimsy boat, oars in their locks ka-chunking, the sound of water and wood greeting. The mouth isn't seen, just the face of the boy, movie-tailored yelp, the open maw of his girlfriend as he, as he is pulled under, as he is bitten, as I am bitten, and the boy surfaces, a red Kool-Aid stain. The wooden ladder is too far to grasp, and I have to swim in the black before the girl is taken to, before I see the gray muscled slab, the great open O, the line of sturdy teeth flossed through with guts. Here, under loon tremolo skies, old injuries surface, the bite, the throat. Angela presses stop. Another day of my education complete, it's time to practice holding my breath as she zips me into a suitcase, light eaten by teeth, breathless inside the bedroom. I bite my arm and I am in the lake swimming. In the suitcase, I am a folded bird. You shout into the open sky, evergreen cloy inside my mouth and I don't wanna look back, don't wanna peer through slatted fingers to watch the girl fall into the water af after the boy screaming. Every night she dies this way, even as the clouds invert and appear in the water, even as I step up the ladder, water raining down, pooling, staining the dock, I never told anyone how at seven I wanted the mark the contortion of limbs inside the suitcase held tight. In the lake, I am seven and screaming at the shark. I read once, during Jaws, Spielberg could only afford half a shark, only the mouth and one side of the monster, so I try to conjure this lopsided beast instead of the full-ribbed, stitched tight fish, fish. When you call to me and cut long, sure strokes to the dock, I am overcome at your wholeness, even as you climb out, rivuleted and shining, my arms come around your body, a gable of bone, and I am being unzipped, cool air streaming through the suitcase, 
the terror vibrating still, I want to jump back into the water, unsure of what I'll find, or even if I come out alive. Thanks. <laughs>